Thanks, it's good to be here, and more importantly, it's good to be done. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's definitely a sense of accomplishment, and uh, I'm grateful for all the people who played a part in that. Uh, thank you to uh, Hans and Lori and Mike Sharon and the rest of the crew that make things happen, get things done, and move the program along. Leadership is a passion of mine. I've witnessed, I've witnessed leadership in different leadership styles, mostly in coaching and sport. It was a young boy who loved basketball, that dad was a pastor, I was in church, but it wasn't until I had a coach that took my passion and pointed it toward Christ and showed the details of what I needed to do to be a man growing into something. A 2013 study from Minnesota Sports Commission and USA Today gave us some interesting statistics about sports that I want to share with you quickly. 35 million American children, ages 5 to 18, play organized sports. Um, An interesting 73% from this study of corporate executives are former athletes. So I make a connection there between there's a lot of interest and also a lot of impact. And that's kind of what drives me, more specifically in high school boys playing basketball, 500,000, one of one in 10,000 of them will make that their career, which is not very good. So what's, what's the end game? As we look at athletics, there's so many wide variety of young people doing athletics. What's the end game? And that's where, as an athlete, I began to see this ends. I'm not going to be an athlete forever. And now as a coach, I can say there's more to this. So I got started as an athletic director, impacting kids, coaching, trying to do that thing. And I really drug my feet with getting into the master's program. Something I wanted to do, something I wanted to pursue, the right program, the right time. Never a good time. These three <laughs> running around, working in high school athletics, long hours. So I had coffee with Mike Sheridan at Starbucks and just talked about the, the program, the online aspects, and uh, my close proximity to the university so I could get here for residencies and, and do that type of thing. So. Um, I got involved, and it was really through that and uh, support and uh, a schedule, like you need a, a, a schedule that you can stick to, the support of your loved ones, and then just uh, inner determination and self-motivation to get you there. My capstone um, was really one of the things that Mike and I talked about to do this, is that working in high school athletics, it was an initiative that I had in my mind and that my, uh, my partner and I were working on and being able to kind of like have that also be part of the papers I wrote for several of the people in here, having kind of all moving in the same direction toward my initiative um, and what we were trying to do with our profession was one of the benefits of this program. I guess I kind of urge you that you can couple what you're doing professionally and what you're interested in with your graduate work and have it be an actual piece of useful um, information and strategic plan, marketing, those types of things you can actually use to, to further your career. So my capstone was on performance training, which is uh, strength, speed, and agility training for high school athletes. Now, most universities, colleges like this one, will have some sort of program, some sort of strength facility. Right down the road, Villanova probably has their own trainer and their own facility just for men's basketball. So you go down to high schools, which have some larger high schools have big weight rooms, but the programming to go along with it really depends. And so my uh, capstone project was bringing high level programming and staff and facility to a small school athletic program. Is that possible? Can you do that? How do you do it? The strategic planning and doing that. So um, this was exciting for me to be able to be a part of. Um, the goals for this in our program was to grow the program increase performance, reduce injuries, but more importantly, increase impact. Um, sports had an impact on my life for Christ, caused me to see who I was as a child of God, what my passion was, and connect the two. And so a normal athlete spends time playing a sport in the fall, maybe a month or two, but if you can keep those kids coming back to your facility year round, your impact increases and they're in front of your coaches relationships get stronger, and that was a little bit of the motivation ministry-wise to keep our program all-encompassing for our high school athletes. So, um, you know, praise the Lord, my strategic plan contributed to some of the things we're doing now, implementing the program, 
hiring a performance trainer, um, fitness classes, and soon to be hopefully a new state-of-the-art fitness facility. So impacting lives, coaching character, creating a better future for young people, all using this interest of athletics. So uh, I certainly thank you to uh, the professors and uh, those that impacted and shaped my thinking. I go back to the lecture that we had, my first residency, and Dr. Blaine McCormick was here. And I think you introduced him as giving a topic on why Christians ought not aspire to serve leadership. So I'm on the edge of my seat like, this guy better bring it. Like, what's he <laughs> right? But it was really then that I connected, OK, it's deeper level thinking. It's not just what I've always known. It's connecting what there is to know, a different way to look at what you already know and what you can know. So the point was, it wasn't that we shouldn't be servants. It was that to be a leader, his point was, you must first learn how to follow. So you know, all that's just one example of how the program shaped my thinking about athletics, leadership, thinking in general, those types of things. So um, I want to thank my school just quickly, just for their support financially and time-wise to be able to do this. Um, my wife and kids would stay away from me late in the night uh, on Sunday afternoons to be able to get things done. But um, I guess I just leave you with this. It's easy, you know, as we focus on, I talked about Dr. Blaine's um, speech on leadership, is just to take what you know and what you're learning from the smart people around you and pay it forward in our, in our lives, in our ministries, and the different things God puts in our path. For me, if that, if it's athletics. But um, that changes for each individual. First Thessalonians, um, I think it's 4, let the chapter out, 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. And no matter what you're doing, you have the choice. It's my belief, my experience, that you have the choice to choose those things. When, you know, when you're, when you're in the midst of, a, you know, some of us will work in you know, children's lives, poverty, whatever we're doing, we have the the decision to rejoice, pray without ceasing, and give thanks. And my late verse is found in Colossians 3.23, which just says, whatever you do, give it your all. If you're going to do it, do it. And if you're going to do it, do it with your whole heart, but don't do it for the praise of those around you. That's short-lived. Do it for the praise of our Savior, who sees your heart, who sees your passion. So this lesson I've learned, I'll just close with this. There's a big difference between impressing people and impacting them. Impressing is easy and short-lived. People are easily impressed, but they don't remember very long. Right? Um, impacting takes commitment, but the reward can be eternal. Whether it's social work, entrepreneurship, or coaching kids, right? we use our passion to drive our commitment, commitment to truly impact others for the kingdom. So I'm proud to be part of this program. Thanks to you for your time, and uh, appreciate it. God bless.